my name is Amy Chalmers and I am the art curator at the South Carolina State Museum. Welcome to another Art Week video. exhibition Early American Face Vessels from the George H. Meyer Collection. This is an important collection of face vessels dating from around 1820 to 1950 that were collected by George and K. Meyer over the course of 30 years. Today we'll be looking at some highlights from that collection. South Carolina is an incredibly important location for the history of stoneware face vessels in the United States. Um, and particularly the Edgefield District of South Carolina. Uh, Phil Wingard is an expert on Edgefield face vessels and stoneware, and he helped us with this exhibit. He also um, helped the Myers write their book about this collection. So he'll tell us a little bit about why these vessels were made and um, about their history here in South Carolina. Today we're looking at the collection of George and Kay Myers. Uh, it's a wonderful collection of American face vessels, and we're going to focus on Edgefield face vessels, which were made in South Carolina between about 1835 and 1875. These were made by black potters in the earlier part. Prior to the Civil War, they were slaves. Then post-Civil War, they were free potters that were working as uh, potters for local potteries. Edgefield face vessels differ from um, anthropomorphic uh, vessels that have been made over the over the centuries, and that these vessels have a sort of stark um, character to them. They uh, they have sort of bug eyes. And they have uh, glaring mouths. And the mouths are open, agape. Uh, there's uh, there's something about them that speaks to us, and it's not. These are not whimsies. These are not end of day pieces. These were these were vessels that were made with a specific purpose. We believe that um, research, ongoing research, is, is indicating that a number of these space vessels were actually used in uh, medicine practices. Space vessels played a role in that to a degree. This was something that was word uh, was mouth uh, word of mouth, and it was passed on generation to generation. And so it's an ongoing research project, but a lot of these face vessels were made for that purpose. Now, if you move over to the face vessels that we attribute to um, Thomas Chandler, for, for example, or the Thomas Chandler School of face vessels, you'll notice that these face vessels have a much more uh, jovial appearance. Uh, often the mouth is smiling and a big wide smile. As you can see, this one that you're looking at came out of Baltimore where Thomas Chandler was trained. And many of Chandler's face vessels have this look where the uh, mouth and the lips are smiling. And I think this vessel and these vessels, these types of vessels are called, um, the form is called a harvest vessel. And um, these vessels were used uh, to celebrate events, uh, end of the year harvests, uh, weddings, even funerals. These were celebratory uh, vessels, drinking vessels, and they were primarily used for that purpose. Uh, we talk about um, the spiritual aspect of uh, face vessels that were made by African Americans. We talk about the whimsical face, vesicle, face vessels and the ones that were sub celebratory and that were used for drinking and, and partying or having a good time. And then we talk about end of the day face, face vessels, which were um, made uh, perhaps for someone who walked into the shop or uh, someone that inquired. And it was something that a potter might get an extra nickel for or an extra dime for if he made a pot like that. Then we also have, um, um, to a degree, we have uh, utilitarian pieces like face pictures. There are a number of those in the collection that are, are, are were made and actually were made to uh, to use, and the face just being something added uh, to as a, maybe a something to have a conversation over while one had breakfast or poured buttermilk. Uh, I think we have uh, a couple of face pictures in the exhibit. These again tend to be later, 
They are um, made uh, probably by white potters, but black potters were working at the sites at the same time. Um, these came out of the Bainham pottery sites, and this this dates on up into the 1880s now. As you get later, uh, you find um, that these spiritual face vessels are no longer being manufactured, and, and now it's basically down to uh, either utilitarian or whimsical or end of the day. As you can see, size varies quite a bit on all these face vessels. They run from about, oh, I think the smallest in, in the collection is only a few inches tall, and the largest uh, uh, being in, in, in Edgefield being uh, a gallon or more. Um, and here again, the size was determined by, in most cases, the person who was interested in having a face vessel. There you can see the one on the right, it's very small, about two inches, two and a half inches tall. So Phil mentioned that there are a number of pottery sites throughout Edgefield and that um, the people who were making these uh, pots were primarily enslaved craftspeople. Um, the, the most famous and actually one of the only known um, enslaved craftspeople is a man by the name of Dave. And this little face jug here is attributed to Dave. We can't say for sure that it was made by him, um, but archeological evidence from other objects that have his signature indicate that these were made by the same hand. Um, and Phil will tell us a little bit more about who Dave was and why he's so important to this history. Okay, we're gonna talk for a few minutes about um, one of America's greatest potters, who was um, potting in the Edgefield district and who potted for most of his life as a slave, unfortunately. Um, Dave was an extraordinary man. He could have probably been a doctor, a lawyer. He could have been in many things, but his ability to throw pots was the most value uh, to his owners. And so he was a potter for most of his life. Um, and we have pots that we know are made by him as early as 1820. And we know we have pots that were made by him as late as 1865. He continued to work until probably about 1873 to 75 when he, we believe he, he, he died, but we don't know his exact death date. Dave was, an owned, by, was owned by the Drakes, and I believe Dave was um, not a field hand, but I believe he was raised in the household, and, and that gave him some special privileges. He learned how to read and write, something that was extraordinary for the day, and um, and then he also was brought into the family business to help in the family business, which was making stoneware. He worked, we know he worked at the John Landrum site, we know he worked at the Pottersville site with Admiral Landrum, and I think through, uh, through his work with Admiral Landrum, he probably learned how to uh, read and write. Uh, Landrum owned and published uh, a newspaper, a famous newspaper, The Hive, and I believe they probably even worked at The Hive to some capacity. He threw massive gallon, he threw massive 40 gallon pots, and then he threw, here's a three gallon jar here with his name on it, as you can see. He also wrote extraordinary poems, as you can see now. With these poems, he wrote something in the name of 30 plus poems, over the, his course of his career as a potter. And some of his poems had double and even maybe triple meanings. Dave was an extraordinary man, really wish I had an opportunity to have known him. Um, he's left a wonderful legacy that is just now beginning to get its, its uh, due recognition. Um, museums all over the country and even in the world now uh, are being exposed to his pots. And um, he's one of South Carolina's greatest citizens. After you've seen the exhibit in person in um, the Face Vessels Gallery, you can exit into the Astronomy Gallery and there is actually another Dave jar that we have permanently on display. Um, Phil mentioned that many of them are inscribed with verses and this one is inscribed with a particularly interesting little verse. It says, oh the moon and stars hard work to make big jars and it's also dated 1834. So this is a beautiful um, example of Dave's giant, giant pots that he would make. And um, this one we like to think of in reference to sort of the greater astronomy gallery and um, his relationship with the moon and stars above him. 
That's all for today. Thank you for joining us for another Art Week video and we will see you tomorrow. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna learn more about face vessels, um, everything in this collection is also in the Myers book, which is available in our short store downstairs and also online on the website. Um, it's called Early American Face Drugs and all of these beautiful face vessels are cataloged and photographed and um, they were also helped by Phil in making that book.